1855, No Nothing Riots, Bloody Monday, August 5th or 6th. I think 6th was election day and 5th was riots, maybe. I don't know. Um, by 1854, the Native American Party became the Know Nothing Party. So they were the Native American Party. They were calling, the white people were calling themselves the Native Americans, right? They were trying to take that from uh, the Indians. The members of the party were called Know Nothings because they were instructed to answer any questions about their secret organization with the statement, I don't know. Uh, some people say that they're instructed to, but also because they're an, a hate group. So like the Klan, the Ku Klux Klan, is like, what do you believe or what are you all doing when you're all meeting? I don't know. It's just a way to not have to answer the question. Um as the Whig Party collapsed after the death of Henry Clay in 1852 and the issue of slavery divided party members, many Whigs looked for a new party to join. Many Democrats also turned to the Know Nothing Party because of the dividing issue over slavery and wanted to think about something else other than slavery. The purpose of the Know Nothing Party was to keep Catholics from obtaining political office. Know Nothings feared and grew suspicious of the universality of the Catholic Church and the power of the Pope. So the Protestants the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants uh, were scared of the Catholic Church and the power of the Pope. I guess they're afraid that they're going to turn their kids Catholic. Right? Oh no, they're going to turn my kids Catholic. So the Know Nothings won great victories in Jefferson County in August 1854, and in April 7th, 1855, John Barbie won the Know Nothing party ticket for mayor of Louisville. So John Barbie. Barbie, right? That's that's his, he's a Barbie. John Barbie, eight, April seventh, eighteen fifty five. On April seventeenth, eighteen fifty five, George Prentice, a Whig party member, turned to the Know Nothing Party, hoping the new party would save the Union from the the dissolving of the country over the issue of slavery. By May fifth, eighteen fifty five, Know Nothings gained control of Jefferson County City Hall. The smoldering embers of hate and prejudice soon caught fire over several incidents leading up to August 6, 1855. On July 8, 1855, a large, mather, uh, a large mob gathered around the Catholic Church on 5th Street. A rumor circulated that the Irish stored arms in the church and prepared to use them in the upcoming state elections. So mobs circled the church thinking they had weapons on, in their basement. Well, the mob eventually found out that they did not have any weapons. A few days later, the Louisville Public School Board fired all the Catholic teachers except for one. So the school board fired all the Catholics. So the Catholics are getting discriminated against. The Mexicans are also Catholic and believe in machismo and marinismo, which is very similar to the Germans. The Germans are very much into marinismo and machismo. So... The mob found out that the church did not contain any arms. They fired all the Catholic teachers except for one. The newspaper, such as the Louisville Democrat and the Louisville Daily Journal, attacked each other and fanned the flames. The journal portrayed the Democrats as the destroyers of the Union and the American Party as the one true saver of the nation. Prentice stated the nation must deal with the foreign hordes. And this is just like Hitler. He's using racial domination, right? He's using race in order to uh, divide and conquer. So the the white Anglo-Saxon English men didn't like the I guess slightly less pale-skinned German uh, barbarian, heathen, Bohemian, Austrian, Bavarian, right? So uh, the Catholics and the Irish too. So I can't forget the Irish. I'm I'm German. I guess I got probably got some Irish in me, but mostly German. Um, the Democrats uh, struck back, stating that the Know Nothings were the worst class of voters. Oh, wait, no. George Prentice portrayed the Democrats as the destroyers of the Union. Prentice stated the Union, the nation must deal with the foreign hordes. He stated that the Pope sought to rule this country, so the Pope was trying to rule America. Uh, the Democrats struck back by stating that the Know Nothings were the worst class of voters on the day before the August elections. Prentice published the following advertisement. Let the foreigners keep their elbows to themselves today at the polls. Americans, are you all ready? We think we hear you shout ready. Well, fire, and may heaven have mercy on the foe. So, that's fucking George Prentice. That's the uh, Louisville Courier Journal today. That's that's the legacy of the Louisville Courier Journal. The, the journal eventually become Louisville 
current journal they they combined so the the earlier the journal they said <laughs> George Prentice said let the foreigners keep their elbows to themselves today at the polls keep the elbows to themselves so don't even bump elbows Americans are y'all ready Americans real the Native Americans right the native white Americans not the actual Native Americans on this dark and bloody ground the Chickasaw or the uh, uh, Shawnee or Cherokee or the Uchi or the Creek Indians says, Americans, are you ready? We think we hear you. Shout, ready, well, fire, and may heaven have mercy on the foe. So it's um, fire, it's a command like a general would do in battle. Ready, fire. But it says, have, heaven have mercy on the foes, foe, so he could be saying that it was uh, the election day, so fire the election ballot maybe. It's uh, slightly ambiguous, but you know exactly what he's talking about. Just before the election, the Know Nothings held a 1,500-man torchlight procession through the streets of Louisville, hoping to intimidate the foreigners. So, right before the election, they've already assembled 1,500 people, a lynch mob uh, of 1,500 men, torchlight procession, marching through the streets of Louisville, trying to intimidate the foreigners, just like the Klan would do. And the Klan still tries to do. They have demonstrations in Cincinnati. Um, and just actually, neo-Nazis were in Frankfurt. So, um, just before the election, the Know Nothings held a 1,500 man torchlight procession through the streets of Louisville. At midnight, the Know Nothings took control of the polls, and the city's police officers backed them up. So, the white Americans took over the polls, and then the police officers was there for them. So, the Germans were by themselves. They had each other. They had their family. They had their friends. Uh, but the cops were against them. The natives were against them. The, the entire establishment was against them. And uh, who's to stop this? Uh, rolling bowl of hatred. On August 6, 1855, the polls opened at 6 a.m. and closed at 7 p.m. Most of the polling stations had thugs at the doors asking for a yellow ticket, which was a sign for the Know Nothing Party, and asked foreigners if they had their nat naturalization papers. So they're asking for yellow tickets. If you had a yellow ticket, go on in. You know, you're you're a true blue Anglo-Saxon uh, Protestant white American. You were, if you're a white American, you could vote, but if you're a German, you could not. Um, and if you didn't have the yellow ticket, they'd also have to ask you for your naturalization papers. So if you hadn't been uh, naturalized as a citizen legally in the country, they wouldn't let you vote, uh, which indicates to me, um, you know, you say what you want about that, but it indicates to me that the, a lot of European immigrants were in America illegally and were, were the first English people. Were they here legally? White people didn't get here legally, most of them, most of their ancestors. The first person to lose his life during the riots was George Berg. George Berg was beaten to death on the street by a group of angry Irish men. George Berg, RIP George Berg, he was beaten up on the street by a group of angry Irish men. Well, Irish men shot, so maybe he, George Berg was a bad guy. During the course of the day, two large riots erupted in the city. The first riot took place in the German district at 4 p.m., which was located in the first ward on the east end of Louisville in Butchertown. So there's two riots that happened on August 6th. The first riot took place in the German district in Butchertown at 4 p.m. It was located in the first ward on the east end of Louisville. The second riot occurred from 6 p.m. until midnight in the Irish district, in the 8th ward in the western section of town. So, one was 4 p.m. on the east end where the Germans were living, and the other one was 6 p.m. until midnight. So, the one in the Irish lasted for a long time. And it says it just lasted at 4 p.m., so it doesn't even sound like it went on forever. Let's keep, let's keep going. On the corner of Shelby and Green Streets, a German fired at a passing carriage. Another man was shot riding in his buggy. Once the gunshots were fired, the mobs of know-nothings became uncontrollable. Luckily, Bishop Martin Spalding gave the keys of the, of the Cathedral of the Assumption to Mayor Barbie. Since Mayor Barbie had won, since they used that demonstration, the intimidation demonstrations, um, sort of like the Mississippi plan, it shows that violence and intimidation worked, and then all the South used it in order to keep black folks from voting uh, and getting legitimate democratically elected power. They were doing the same thing to the Germans, using violence to prevent them from uh, being able to exercise their right to vote, whether they were legal or not. 
So when the mob arrived at the cathedral, Mayor Barbie searched the premises and told the crowd that there were no arms inside the church. So Mayor Barbie checked it out. There was nothing in it. The mob moved into St. Martin's Church on Shelby Street. St. Martin de Tours Church on Shelby Street, believing that the Catholics had arms stored there. So again, they're checking. They checked the Cathedral of Assumption for any weapons. No weapons at the Cathedral of Assumption. Then they went and checked St. Martin's of the de Tours Church on Shelby Street, believing the Catholics had weapons stored in that church. Again, Mayor Barbie assured the crowd there were no arms. The mob joined about another 50 men carrying muskets, bayonets, and pulling a cannon. At 3 p.m., the mob assembled around Arm Brewster's Brewery. Arm Brewster's Brewery. The mob burned down the brewery, but not before they drank a lot of its contents. So they ramshackled a German uh, bar, and then they burnt the whole fucking thing down. So that's what the fucking white people were doing. White Americans were burning down German bars, and they were... Uh, attacking German churches, German Catholic churches, uh, saying that they had weapons, and there was no weapons there, but they had to uh, adhere to whatever the mob was saying, since they were, it was a mob, and a mob has no sense when they're murderous and bloodthirsty. The mob burned down the brewery, but not before they drank a lot of the contents. The riot began to fizzle out in the German ward, since most of the mob members were drunk. In the Irish War, the, fight, the fighting broke out between no nothings and Irishmen after the killing of Theodore Rhodes when he and two other men were beaten by two Irishmen while walking through the district. Um, Bishop, uh, just a side note, Bishop Martin Spalding is the one that said that there was over a hundred uh, deaths during the No Nothing Rights. Bishop uh, uh, Martin Spalding. Bishop Martin Spalding. So he said over 100 people would die, had died in the Know Nothing riots. So it sounds like two people got shot, but it sounds like it was Germans who had shot them, um, the two people. Another man was shot. They fired at a passing carriages. Uh, and they said that once the shot was, you know, once it was started, then the, uh, the uh, Know Nothings were uncontrollable. And that's assuming that was the actual beginning. So who, you know, who knows if any of this I would say a lot of this, I would believe that something had happened those days, but since there's very starkly different accounts of what happened on Bloody Monday, it, it's hard to actually sift through and figure out what exactly had happened. In the Irish War, the fighting broke out between know-nothings and Irishmen after the killing of Theodore Rhodes, when he and two other men were beaten by two Irishmen while walking through the district. Large mobs entered the Irish War, and the residents fired on the mob from houses, Located along Quinn's Row. And Quinn's Row was a an Irish settlement. Named after a man named by Quint. Patrick Quinn owned a series of houses located along Main Street between 11th and 12th Street. So I heard uh, Mayor Fisher said 9th Street is where the races are divided in Louisville. So in uh, 12th and 11th Street, that would be on the you know black side, if you want to use Mayor Fisher's distinction. Which I don't know much about Louisville, so that's that's the theory that I have in my head until someone tells me differently or until I see something or read something differently. The No Nothings burned the whole row of houses, destroying 12 houses and burned several people to death. The mob killed Quinn, an Irishman, and threw his body onto the flames. Two men were hanged from their banisters of their own homes and also consumed to the flames. They're hanged on, on the, from the banisters of their own homes. Some of the Irish people were hanged in, out of their own homes. Just straight up lynching Irishmen. Fires from the burning houses lit the Louisville skylight, but houses were not the only building on fire. A grocery store on the corner of Madison and Shelby burned. The coopering factory of Thomas Garrity and Edwin Prom also fell to the flames. The mob shortly broke up. The last victim of the riots occurred when an old German was pulled from his bed and shot to death. Another German was beaten and then thrown down his stairway until he died. Reverend Carl Boswald of the Church of Immaculate Conception at 8th and Cedar, at 8th and Cedar, rushed to the bedside of the dying pa parishioner but fell fatally wounded by a hail of stones. James Speed, a local attorney and later attorney general for Abraham Lincoln in 1864, witnessed the Bloody Monday riots. He worked in his office until about 5 p.m., but before he left his office, he saw many blood-covered Irishmen carried off to jail. He witnessed a crowd yelling uh, down Jefferson Street, guarding an Irishman to jail covered in blood. So, 1855, no nothing riots, Louisville, Kentucky. 
1855, against the Germans, white people against the Germans and the Irish and the Catholics. Uh, everything that the white people thought was foreign at that time. 